All right, one way you can go as you're putting in your flat color is not to even worry about getting the right local color. You know, even though I'm being inspired by these tattoos, it doesn't mean I have to stick with the gold or the blue on the blade. It's just a place to start. So one technique is to use really crazy colors for your flat colors. And professionally, this is known as flatting. And flatting is actually, if you go to swatches, you can get um, like flatting color palettes that you can download and bring in. But basically, if we look at our slides, flatting colors are kind of crazy colors that come from the original set of color formulations that were used in the, the first half of the 20th century just mixing cyan, magenta, and yellow inks together. So I like to use these. So for instance, I can do a screen grab of this, open it up in Photopea as a new file. And then I can just steal crazy colors from this and use that to drop in. Use my magic wand on the black line art layer, select an area, go to my flat color layer, use the paint bucket, drop it in. Now, here's a faster technique. You can make a duplicate of your black line art. Make sure you keep one that's clean. So here's a duplicate, it's called layer one, right? I'm gonna unlock it. And this is why there's an advantage to using the paint bucket because the paint bucket has built into it a tolerance lot just like the magic wand and if you have contained shapes you can go pretty quickly with it so i'm just going to call this a temp layer so that temp layer oh i have to unlock it before i can duplicate it there we go so it's the black line art copy but then i want to lock my black line art turn it off turn on the copy and you can do this with a vector as well and now It'd be just like rasterizing your vector layer. Now, all I need to do is stay on the paint bucket, select a color, whoops, use the eyedropper tool, select a color, let's do something kind of crazy. And now, without having to move between the flat color and the black line art, the paint bucket will automatically find its edges, right, of any contained shape. So that's helpful. But it leaves you with black lines in with your coloring. So then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to select all the black lines and delete those. But I'm gonna just choose some flatting colors here and finish this off since I've shown you all the different ways that you can choose your colors and drop them in. And I think, oh wait, just that ridge, let's see. I think I've mostly filled in with something, with some color, whether it's a local color or whether it's just a crazy flatting color. I filled everything in with something except for the skull. Oh, except for these. I had a question about um, symmetry. What's your question? 
So like if you're this is going back to the first uh inking phase. If your drawing is imperfect, like let's just say it's like mine is a picture of uh, a frog with horns. Uh -huh. Like let's just say the horn on the left is slightly smaller than the horn on the right. When you're in the inking phase, you can see imperfections like that. So just like with the vector, how I did one side of it yep. and copy and paste and flip the horizontally. Is there something you can do that or Yeah, you just it wanna it's those compositing skills. So it's just like what I did to to duplicate the inking I did here and just you want to lasso the half that you like, duplicate it onto its own layer, and then you can just flip it horizontally using Control T. And then you want to merge those those lines together. So it's just like you did with the vector logo. Okay. Thanks. All right. So now here is the issue. Every other shape. that I've done was fully contained with a black outline, right? But what if, I'm gonna take a chunk out of the skull here. What if I have some inking that's not contained? So when I try to ink it, this is what happens. Or when I try to color it or select it, it flows into everything. So how can you prevent that from happening? So I'll be showing you that next. And that's why I haven't filled in the skull yet because there's some openings here. Like I wanna separate this section from that section, from this section, from this section, but they're open. So, but first on this temporary one, where I just showed you how you can use the paint bucket tool on its own, um, I'm gonna get rid of the black lines. So just like you can use the magic wand to select empty space. I'm now going to use the magic wand to select the empty space around the black line art. And I'm going to turn off contiguous. Right. So if I turn off all the layers, you'll see I have a selection of the empty space around my, my black line art. Another reason why we want our black line art clean and on its own layer. Now I'm going to say select the inverse of that. And then I'm going to turn on my black line art copy, where I've dropped in these other colors with the paint bucket tool. And then I'm just going to delete. Oh, wrong layer, delete. I'm glad I had my black line art layer locked. And then I can deselect. And then lo and behold, we are left with just those filled in colors, right? And we combine that with our flat color layer. And I'll move my flat color on top and then merge these two together. Layer, merge. And now I've got one, I've got the simple sandwich again with the color in between the black line art and the white background. Okay, but if I use my magic wand and I select the skull, and I go find a flat color I want for the skull. It's amazing how limited the colors of tattoos are, but how they do a lot with them it can be very informative, right? And then I go to paint that color into my flat color because parts of the skull are open. It floods the whole image. So that's no good. So what I need to do is close off those areas that are open. So what do I do? My black line art, and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. To make a duplicate in Photopea, you have to unlock it first. Then I'm going to do Command J. Doesn't seem to be doing it though. Let me see. I must have already had something selected. So let me deselect. Go back to my history. Go to my black line art. Make sure it's unlocked. Duplicate it. I just did this. Okay, good. I get black line art copy. Now I lock my black line art. I turn it off. On my black line art copy, what I often do is just take the color
and paint with it with the paintbrush. So if I'm going to fill, you know, I'm going to fill the skull in with a gray. Or maybe a slightly warm gray. So I'm going to select this myself. Okay. Well, but you can't see warm gray very easily. So here, I'll make it pretty dark. And then I'm just going to paint that in where I think it needs to be contained. I know it needs to be contained here. I know it needs to be contained here. So I fill in those gaps. Then on that layer, I select with my magic wand. Oops. And I want to make sure I have contiguous checked. And then I can go to my flat color layer. And I'll be able to drop them in. So I'm going to pick a lighter cream color. That's about it. So this way. On my flat color. And then for here, this has to be a dark kind of gray color. This is the advantage of using the, the computer color. I'm in the same hue, that kind of orangish hue, but I'm just going to take it darker. And then drop that in on the flat color. Layer. And then for the last one, I'm going to go darker still. So these are called duotone variations. I'm taking the same orange, like cream color, and then I'm adding darker and darker variations to it. Not black, because this is color, but maybe approaching it, getting pretty close. Okay. Then I'll deselect. And now I'm done with this layer. I don't need it anymore. That duplicate. Right. So what's beautiful about having flat color is now everything is individual and can be easily selected and changed just with the paint bucket tool or with the magic wand. Every little thing. And so I can do anything I want with that color. So this is flatting, the first stage. Most simple type of digital color. To make your flats look a little bit better, because you see how jagged they are, you know, an anti-aliased, I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to blur it slightly. Gaussian blur. with pretty low radius, because I just want to smooth that edge. And that will go behind our line art. So I'm going to, ah, come on, extend it like two pixels. I'm just going to type it in. Once you've drawn a line to the paintbrush, too, is a way to change the, their color? Once you've drawn the lines of the paintbrush tool. Like, a, for example, let's just say I add um, a foot to my drawing and it's black. Is there a way to change those lines to green from black to green? Yeah, you could you could double click on the layer and, and put a color overlay on it. OK, so what I did was I just Gaussian blurred the flat color, the duplicate. Now I'm going to duplicate that duplicate over and over, and it just extends and softens the edges of my flat color. And then I'm going to select all of those, layer, merge those layers together. The same way I would soften my line art, right? or smooth out my line art. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. So let's see the difference between what I did, and I'll walk through it. So this was my, my coloring before. You see, see that?